In this video, I tell you about the things that Flames of War taught me about painting. So about three or four years ago, I got into Flames of War, which is a historical war game. It's generally done in World War II, but they've also made a Vietnam version, I think a modern version, and even a World War I version. But uh, uh, the guys that I was playing with, we were predominantly sticking to World War II and predominantly late World War II. There were three at the time, uh, three different eras within World War II. You had your early, your mid, and your late. And uh, we would try to pay attention to what the actual vehicles were supposed to be painted like by looking through just Google or books or things like that. That's one of the things that's very different about historical gaming versus fantastical gaming, whether it's sci-fi, fantasy, or whatever, steampunk. The, the difference is that you have reference, and, and some of the players that you might end up playing against at, at events are going to call you out a little bit, not necessarily, it's not like you're going to get disqualified, I wouldn't think, but if they're like, nah, you know, they didn't paint them like that in the late war, or whatever. And if you're into that, you're into that. But if you're not, it can sometimes be a little daunting. Through the research that I was doing as I was painting up my American force, predominantly Sherman M4A1 tanks, just because I love the look of those particular vehicles, as I was doing my research, I started to notice something and I read a couple of little short, you know, forum posts about it and things like that. And it really made me think a lot differently about miniatures painting. Now, remember, if you've been watching for a while, I've been doing this for a while, but I started in, um, you know, sci-fi and things like that. And then I eventually did move into some fantasy and things before I got into historicals. And there's a big difference between historicals and the more fantastical side of our hobby. And that is, is that... Even though Space Marines, for example, in Warhammer 40k are part of a military force, they never get painted that way. They never get painted like a military. There's always a lot of kind of crazy heraldry to some degree. You know, these guys are all bright red, these guys are bright blue, all that kind of stuff. These guys are bright yellow, which in the normal real world battlefield would be a little weird. And then if you get into actual fantasy stuff, specifically if you're going like... I don't know, like Bretonians or Imperials or whatever like that in something like Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigmar, you're going to be dealing with a lot of heraldry and a lot of bright, crazy colors. And they always show you in these paintings, these things that you see on the websites, the stuff that the company themselves puts out, everything is always tons and tons and tons and tons of colors. But the real world military doesn't work that way, strangely enough. As I started doing research for how I was going to paint my Shermans, I started to realize something. And that is, is that the American military, at least in World War II, liked to paint everything green. And I mean everything. I mean everything. So the tiny little tanks, I have a couple over here. The tiny little tanks, which I'm going to do a close up here, but um, they have shovels like strapped to the back of the tank, right? So you've got this tiny little tank and he's got a tiny little shovel in there. And me being a long time, you know, miniature painter, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to paint the handles brown because they're wood. And I'm going to paint the blade of the, the shovel, you know, like a, a metallic color because they're, you know, they're, they're made out of metal. And then it turns out that I started start doing some research and, you know, reading a couple of things that all of that would have been painted green as would, um, that thing and that uh, little can of uh, gas, I guess. And uh, every pretty much last little thing on this entire vehicle would have been painted green. A specific shade of green, of course, but it would have been painted green. And that kind of was, at first, very weird and almost a little off-putting to someone who's been doing this for a while. Because, like I said, I've been painting, you know, crazy space marines and, and fantasy and steampunk, Malifaux, all this stuff... And it's always, you need to have more colors. You can't just make something monotone. That would be horrific. But really, in the military, that was the whole point. And it really struck me. Even though we're talking about some fantastical uh, military organization in a lot of different types of games that aren't real, like, say, historicals, do we have to make everything a completely different color and do so much of that stuff? Now, again, this is all my personal preference, and it may be yours as well, or it may not. You may love on a, you know, a 40K a Space Marine Rhino to paint every last little tiny little thing a different color and do it all, and that's great. That's what you want to do, but 
to the newer painters out there who are looking at these paint jobs and, and marveling at them and going, I just don't know if I have that kind of patience or the time or the skill. I'm just going to tell you that you don't have to go quite down that road. This is a, a rhino. And again, I'll do a close up. This is a rhino that I did. Um, a couple of years ago for a force that I was building called that I was calling Silver Cross or Steel Cross. I don't know, something like that. Steel Cross, I think. And um, they're mostly blue, like they're, they're Space Marines and they're mostly blue and they have one shoulder pad that is a bone color. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to make it simple because I wanted to get them on the tabletop quicker versus later. Now, as it turned out, I didn't get super far in the painting of the actual models. I did a lot of building. And I started working on vehicles. And when I got to this vehicle, I started to think to myself, well, can't I just do most of it in blue? I mean, wouldn't that be fine? You know, I mean, now I've got a little bit of gold filigree stuff here. And I did some fanciness up here on the um, top of the hatch or whatever. And, you know, of course, there's mud and effects like that. But otherwise, the vehicle is pretty much just blue, which makes a lot of sense from, a you know, just a standpoint that, if you're trying to crank out hundreds of hundreds of vehicles, you don't want to get real fancy with the paint job. A lot of times in the military movies that you see, there's always some kind of paint job on like the nose art of an airplane. But you know, the company that made that plane didn't put that there. The guys who were sitting around waiting for their next mission and bored off their behinds for three or four days, those are the guys that painted that stuff on the nose art. Same with tanks. Any kind of graffiti, basically, for lack of a better term, was something that the guys themselves put on there. But when the military put it on there, it was green, and there was a serial number, and maybe a star. And that's about it, at least as far as the Americans are concerned. The Germans, from what I understand, got more into camouflage and things like that. But for the most part, standardization is the key. So when you start to think about, I'm going to start painting something, and I'm not even talking about historicals, I'm talking about... I'm going to start painting some vehicles for my whatever military game. It doesn't have to be 40K. It doesn't have to be, you know, Warhammer Fantasy. It doesn't have to be anything. It can be anything that's not real. You can still look at it if you're interested. And if it's still a military force, as opposed to some skirmish game like, um, I don't know, something like Malifaux, where those basically are gangs, for the lack of a better term. They don't run around in tanks. But if you've got a vehicle kind of based army, think about the colors Think about it as you start working on the force and get things kind of working together in that fashion so that you can have simple colors, simple color schemes, specifically if you're new to this, if you're a starter, and if you've got a big army to do. Simplicity is the key. It's the way they did it in the military, and it's the way you should probably think about it for your paint jobs.